everything in here. We are so excited. Here this is gonna be the front room. another transitional house. Beautiful natural wood burning fireplace. That, that right there. Oh, yeah. Is where I see another patio that we can put up for the music. You know, yeah. Right there. And then look at this natural wood. Now, this, was, this comes from the front oh, door. Oh, wow. This comes from the front door up here. Right. So, you know, when we came in, we came in on the right. This is on the left. This is beautiful. This is what we're going to do for project 225 Longwood. We expect this to be our finished. We need you. We need you at Perspectives for Life. That's Perspectives for Life. Dot com. It's perspectives, the number four, live.com. Listen, in the city of Detroit, well, in the state of Michigan, Michigan is listed statistically as the number six, number six uh, for individuals that are having mental disorders due to um, being living in this environment. We have a chance to make a change. We have a chance to get Detroiters up and running and whole. Would you please help us? This is something that we're doing out of the, the desire of our heart to see everybody get what they need. Would you help us do this, please? I'm glad to be here, first of all. Thank you. Um, but in November of 2012, I was working, I was active, I was doing everything I was told you need to do to have the best in life. You know how they say, pull yourself up by the bootstraps, make sure you get all the things you're supposed to have. And I had all that. And I was working downtown at uh, the VA hospital. And on, in, no, in to November, I got a phone call that my grandmother was ill. Mm -hmm. And I, was call, I called the doctor and asked um, if I could bring her in. He said yes, so I brought her in. And I called my husband and I told him, I said, Grandma's not feeling good. We're going to take her to the doctor. And he says, stop by and pick me up. Well, it was so ironic because usually he would have been gone fishing. But wow. that particular day, he said, pick me up. I'm going to go with you. We got to grandma's house and grandmother was standing there looking like a little Pocahontas because she had long hair and she said, Red, I don't want to go. And I said, well, grandma, if you don't go, we're not going to know what's wrong with you. And she said, well, okay, if you think we need to go, we'll go. So we started on our way uh, towards Dibble Heights. We were on Warren in the Southfield Freeway uh, ramp. And this kid comes up off the ramp not looking at what he's doing because he's texting on his phone wow and instead of turning um right into his lane he came all the way over and turned right and hit his head on wow as a result of that uh my husband is paralyzed 
my grandmother passed away and I was told that I would not be able to walk and at the time when they were telling me this I could barely talk um, and at that point I realized something has to give because I was so hurt with my grandmother passing and then I'm watching how my husband is being treated being paralyzed and it was nothing that I could do for him Wow and I did have therapy I had rehab and um, they took me to a point of where they said there was nothing else they could do and then we had to move and we became independent in the sense of we needed care providers and things of that nature we actually both moved into where we live now in wheelchairs but I'm I'm glad to say I'm no yes. longer in a wheelchair I may have a limp but one thing I know about that limp is that his grace is sufficient that's and, right and I have I have pains and I have my issues but the most important thing to me was the perspective I had to change my perspective because I can no longer just sit there and be concerned about my husband, what's going to happen to him, what's going to happen to us. I'm watching everything that we worked all our life for just go out the window. I, you know, when things like this happen, you don't, you don't realize your life insurance is gone. Nobody's taking care of your bills. Everything that you were paying has ceased unless you got somebody in that position. So things for Willie and I just totally drastically changed. Yes. And you know, some people say, oh, they're going to get a lot of money and this and that. You don't realize this is a long process to get all that done. And so in the meantime, what do you do? And if you're not careful, you lose your mind. And I know what I'm talking about because right. my husband is my life. And he's uh, first and foremost in everything that, that I do. And when I saw the mistreatment and the mishandling of him, I said, I got to get it together or we both go end up that's dead. Right. Mm -hmm. And that's just the bottom line. Wow. Um, it was uh, a difficult time because when my grandmother uh, passed away and they told me, like I said, I couldn't talk and I couldn't even wow. figure out how to deal with those emotions. And then I'm looking at my husband who was vibrant, had not one but two gardens, walked two and three times a day, fished every day. I come in from work because he was already retired. He'd have the vegetables in the sink that he picked from the garden. Then he'd be going out to catch the fish that I would cook before I go to work that night. So it was very hard, hard on me. And as I looked at that, I said, you know, people are losing their minds. The, the pressures of life can be so hard. That's right. I look at individuals like, for example, the gentleman that when the Sam Club closed their doors and they said, out of business clothes and people were going to their jobs they thought they had some security they they might just been living from paycheck Take to paycheck right. but they thought they were they going thought to they work were going and to they work. get there especially in my opinion for a man to go to the door and say close for business what, like, is what, is like, what are you talking about right and when you think of grandmother her legacy i'm telling you mm -hmm. it, it, it hurts deep. but i i also have to know my perspective is all things are working together for my good. Now, That's while right. I, while I was going through it, no, absolutely. I didn't see it that way. That's right. But had I not gone through that, you and I would not be talking about what we're talking about now. That's right. And I realized I didn't do it all by myself. I had individuals that were helping me. And you need to know where to go and how to go and what to do and what to say and when to say. But if you're in this thing all alone and your, your mindset is, I can't do anything because you, your, your mind is just so frozen with fear or pain or hurt, you'll lose it. That's right. That's, that's just the best way to that, put it. You'll right. lose it. But if you change your perspective, I had to change my perspective. Yes, I had to teach myself how, how to walk. Yes, I had to fall into the door. Yes, I had to hit my head and get scrapes on my body. This is one right here that will never go away. So that I can learn how to walk so that I could be there for my husband because he didn't have another mouthpiece. He didn't have anybody else there. And it's always been us. He's taking care of me, yeah. and I take care of him. <laughs> and so I've gone through some things in order that it may help me to help someone else. That's and that's right. what it's about. That's right. The world has become so cruel sometimes. I, I look at people and I'm like, why, why is everybody so mean? Because they got hardships of life. That's right. You know, and their perspective is adverse most times. Right. Yeah. And that's what needs to change. And that's what Perspectives for Life is all about. What, what did you say? Change your mind. Change, change your, your life. life. That's <laughs> it. Change your change mind. Change your mind. Change, change your, your life. life.